Hi everyone. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to go into uh, procedural textures. So uh, let's go into scene textures, and here we are in our textures and materials window. And to create a new procedural texture, you can either uh, click on this 2D texture or a 3D texture, and they really look look the same. You have the same modules and stuff inside. Uh, however, there's a fundamental difference between those two, and I'm not going to go into uh, that in this tutorial. I'm going to do that in another tutorial uh, about uh, texture mapping, because then you can really see the difference. Uh, for now, let's just uh, create a 2D procedural texture. I'm going to name this example, uh, example 2. Alright, so um, <coughs> what is this? The uh, procedural texture is basically a mathematical way to create patterns on a 2D surface. So let's just create a 2D surface here, so you can see what, uh, what I mean. Um, so this is very... Um, mathematical based uh, however you don't really have to be an expert in mathematics or anything to use this um, a little bit of understanding about uh, certain mathematical principles uh, definitely might come in handy but it's not uh, required or anything uh, for instance I um, I uh, started doing this when I was 13 I I was not really uh, into mathematics back then. I didn't really know anything, but uh, I still managed to create some cool textures with this. So if I can do it, you can do it too. Okay, so um, the way this works is um, you uh, go here into patterns, and there are a couple of things here, and these are functions. And what a function does is you have an input and it transforms the input and gives an output and you can do th something with it so uh, one thing I use the most uh, is the under color functions the custom color function uh, and, and this is uh, a really nice thing to see what you're doing first of all and you can uh, map colors to a function and I'm going to show you what I mean by that so let's uh, get the output of this wood pattern that I selected here, just for an example. And let's connect it into this custom color function and connect the color into the diffuse color box. And as you can see, the preview changes. And I'm going to explain what uh, what's going on here. Uh, this wood function. Uh, generates an output based on a position on the on the texture. So this is a 2D texture. So you have 2D coordinates. So let's uh, just say that we have an uh, axis here. This is the Y axis, and this is the X axis. So for instance, uh, let's say that this is uh, uh, axis one, for example, and this is axis or the, uh, this is y is 1 so if x is 1, y is 1 then we have a value of 0 and the custom color function here uh, can, uh, how do I say it, can visualize these 1's and zeros. and uh, 0 is uh, black and 1 is white pretty stra straightforward and everything in between is just a shade of grey so uh, th this custom color function visualizes what's going on here with this uh, pattern um, Yeah. so for every input uh, the wood function gives an output of a value between 0 and, w zero and, and 1 and this uh, custom color function you can edit this and you can uh, get 
a lot more colors in here um, and this is basically a way to map a color to a certain value of s uh, between 0 and 1 so let's try that out now we want to uh, make a, a bit of wood uh, texture here so let's uh, make a color a bit of dark red brownish and is something I'm going for now let's go with this one as you can see this already uh, is already updating and let's create a little bit lighter color like this as you can see it's, uh, this is now mapping a 0 to this color 1 to this color and everything in between to what's in between here you can also add another uh, other points with different colors so let's say that we have a very dark color in the middle um, you can see this happening also in uh, this pattern here so and you can also uh, move this around and as you can see it also updates here so you can uh, create pretty cool things with this let's delete this so alright, uh, this is uh, basically an explanation of the basics of um, the procedural textures with uh, the wood function. There are a couple of other functions and I'm going to um, discuss very briefly the ones that I use most. Let's go into... Um, well, the, no the noise function is something I use a lot. It just uh, creates noise, but you can also edit the noise. Uh, for instance, if you uh, double click this um, function, you can adjust the properties, like the amplitude or the amount of octaves. But there are also inputs here that you can um, adjust using uh, mathematical functions that you create in here. So let's just make a very um, simplistic uh, just one value if you set it to higher than the standard the, the standard is uh, uh, 0.5 so if you set it to 1 it's higher and you get a more noisier more grainier pattern also if you increase the amount of octaves you get more mm, yeah more noise the higher frequency or something I think that's uh, how you can call it so this is a very great function to create all sorts of things and you can ma uh, manipulate it with all kinds of other functions that are present here so let's just look at a few more turbulence It's also one I uh, like to use, it has a bit of an organic feel to it, you can do some cool things with that. Um, one thing I want to show, I suggest you uh, experiment with these uh, yourself, I just want to uh, uh, get the checker here because I want to uh, show you another thing. And that is the um, transform. Uh, let's first start with the linear transform. Um, we have here an output of an x, a y, and a z. And here we have an input, x, y, z. And we can connect these. And we can edit the linear transformation. And as you can see, we have here some parameters that you can uh, adjust. For instance, you can put in 0.5. Well, no. Let's let's first uh, scale it uh, up a little bit or down, I should say. Let's put in uh, a four in all the dimensions. As you can see, the texture will be smaller if you do that. So if uh, if I would now translate or move this 
0.5 uh, you could barely see it actually there you have it um, you can move it around with this um, normally you don't really have to do that because you can um, move it along your object in your scene with um, texture mapping if you uh, wanted to do that but you can al you can also do things here you can also rotate uh, something really strange happened here I don't know why that is maybe if I rotate it like this 90 degrees of course is not going to do much alright I have to say I have no idea what, uh, what's going on here I'll, uh, I'll have to look into that but anyway this is a way to uh, transform your your input so the input is that the function is receiving gets distorted if you will like for instance now it is um, scaled so the input is scaled so the output also is scaled All right let's um, look at one more um, transform that's the jitter transform um, and I should say these two transformations uh, the polar and spherical transformations are similar to the linear transform only they use polar or spherical coordinates I believe and that gives a little bit different effect um, like you can uh, edit uh, the spherical coordinates for example but I never really use those and I think um, it's a bit confusing to use uh, other coordinating systems and stuff alright so the jitter um, alright in order to show you this now I, I can just sh show you like this um, the jitter transformation what it does is it, is it uh, creates some kind of noise uh, it adds, adds noise to it and I'm now going to uh, scale the noise down a little bit as you can see the noise is now um, it has um, smaller wiggles in here and the amplitude also says something about how big these wiggles are so this way you can uh, distort your texture a little bit so I think no I'm just going to uh, uh, go into what these are I'm not going to show you any examples because uh, the tutorial might be a little bit too long I do do that um, Yes, let's uh, look at what the, what these do. This is of course the diffuse box that we have here. This is just uh, color information on your object. The specular, uh, I, I believe I uh, already uh, explained this uh, in another tutorial on uh, uniform uh, textures and these are the same, only this time you can use functions to do basically the same thing as here you can um, have a pattern in for, in for example the specular map or emissive map or even the amount of specularity for instance if you want uh, a very re reflective spot over here and not over there you can create it with this also the bump map is very very useful the displacement as well and I'm going to go into that later but what it does is um, it receives an input of um, values between 0 and 1 and 0 values are low values and white values and 1 val values that are higher are higher so to speak but I'm going to go into that in my next tutorial uh, my next tutorial I already know what uh, it's going to be about because I already made it um, I'm going to do an example I'm going to make a brick wall um, yes so uh, my next tutorial will be an example and um, after that I'm I guess I'm I will 
maybe do another example of um, showing you how to use these uh, all these things here. So uh, I hope this uh, helped, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later.